Hey everybody, it's Cody Fry. Today we're gonna do a song breakdown of my track, Waltz for Sweatpants. So the inspiration for this song comes from a lot of different places, but I had been listening to this Brahms clarinet quintet. It's a clarinet quintet in B minor, opus 115, and it was the second movement. And it's sort of the slow movement and it's a pretty simple chord progression, but the way Brahms waits to resolve certain notes in the chord just makes it so interesting. And so I kind of wanted to try my hand at that sort of delayed resolution technique, and that sort of got me off on this tangent about, you know, waltz for sweatpants. The song itself is about two people who show up at a fancy party, and they're dressed wearing their pajamas or sweatpants, and they just decide to kind of embrace it and be like, no, this is who we are, and y'all can deal with it. It's sort of a celebration of anybody who's ever not quite fit in or feels a little quirky because those are all the interesting people. Really quickly, let's just start off in Logic. This is the Logic file. I'll open all the tracks here. It's a pretty manageable 70 tracks uh, that were used. And so this is sort of the MIDI mock-up. For this song, I was writing a lot in Finale and actually notating the parts. And then I would go in and play them in MIDI so I could kind of hear it all come together and just so you can get a sense of how the MIDI sounds. Here we go. Uh, just a little peculiar. Maybe more than but life's far too fleeting for us not to be. For MIDI instruments, my go-to is probably Spitfire Audio. I love their symphonic strings library, the symphonic brass, symphonic winds, all that stuff. I have just many, many Spitfire. I love Spitfire. Break the rules they made up. So here we are in Pro Tools. This is where everything ends up. And you'll see now we have the real orchestra here, which was the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in London, recorded at Angel Studios. It was a dream. The main things that came over from the Logic file were all the percussion, because we didn't record percussion live, so all of that stuff is either MIDI or I recorded it here with stuff that I have. And yeah, so you'll see kind of the percussion stuff here. Piatti, the sub hits and suspended cymbals and all that stuff was recorded separately. If you've ever wondered about my vocal chain, there it is written down right there. You can see these as well. So let's mute the vocal for a sec. And the beginning, if you listen to that clarinet quintet from the Brahms, you'll kind of notice a similar technique here where the chords are resolving on weak beats. So... So you have the... Da, 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 la, that's the resolution, uh, but it waits until beat two. And that's kind of that thing I was talking about from Brahms where I just... I don't know, I was trying to kind of recreate that same sort of feeling. I love when we get into the second A section and the strings start in with the sh Here, we play that back. The woodwinds there. I like to do something called text painting where I kind of take the lyric and try to interpret it with the orchestration. So when I say the lyric, people are staring, you get this sort of like timpani roll and low brass. People are staring. It kind of gives you that ooh sense of like foreboding, but then immediately followed by a solo string quartet. So you just, you know, we had the whole string compliment there, but I just said just the first chair only. And they kind of give you that sort of like, we stopped caring and it's like, the, we're playing the funeral for our caring. It's like, <laughs> this world's tiniest violin for how much we care about your opinion. People are staring, but we stopped caring a long time. Such and then we're into the chorus here. So here's the score for Waltz for Sweatpants. As you can see, it's a pretty standard size orchestra. Um, woodwinds are not totally in triples. For example, we only have two flutes and two 
uh, one oboe, one English horn. So it's a, like slightly smaller than a full-size orchestra, but everything else is pretty much there. So I'm going to play the first chorus and see if you can listen to this sort of internal arpeggio that is played by the viola, the cellos, and then the bassoon up here. Um, you'll hear that sort of like... So see if you can hear that, because I like the way it sort of propels the chorus here. Violins join in. <laughs> These orchestra players are just so good. I mean, that was probably the second time they had ever played that, you know? It's just amazing how quickly it comes together. So for the third A section, or for the verse after the first chorus, I want to do something a bit different with the orchestration since we'd already done like the woodwinds and the strings. So I thought it'd be cool to have sort of the brass lead the way here, specifically the French horns. And so what I did was this sort of like Waltz of the Flowers-esque four-part French horn thing. And then, of course, on the lyric, smile, we get that little piccolo flourish there. To smile, who had... <laughs> and then in the second chorus, we have more people sort of joining in on that arpeggio. It gives it a little bit more thickness. The French horn counter melody. beautifully played by the French horns. See for the second B section, second chorus, uh, there's just a lot more people playing that arpeggiated line in the woodwinds and in the strings. And the low brass is really holding down the harmonic foundation of just like that sustained energy. I like this technique in the bridge section where we have these violin tremolos and viola tremolos and they're sort of accented by the glockenspiel, orchestra bells, and then the celeste and the woodwinds that sort of give staccato punches to the beginning of the tremolos and it's just kind of a nice sound. It gives it a little bit of like effervescence there. <laughs> So it sort of just gives a little bit of definition to those tremolos, which I like. So I want to talk about the end of the bridge where we have this sort of fake modulation type thing. Uh, and so here's how that looks. It's on this page here. And you can see, obviously, the notes start to get a little bit more intense here. Uh, but listen for how the French horns begin with this and then the trombones come in and then the trumpets finish it out and that leads us into the final B section or the final chorus. So here comes the build. All right, all right, we'll get to there. And so I, I just love that. I, it's something that I think is really kind of elegant about it is the vocal melody. And so we're in the key of E flat. And when the vocal goes up to the B who we are, which is an A flat, and we go to an E major chord, which is the flat two in E flat, obviously, but that A flat becomes the third of that E major chord, and then the chorus begins on the two minor, and so then it becomes the minor third of the two minor chords. So 
you're, the vocal is sort of holding through this note that becomes this weird connection between the two sort of key centers. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I just, I feel like it just gives me chills. I love the way that that modulation sort of works out. Here it is with the vocal. So that's the third. Still the third. So the vocal sort of provides this through line that kind of takes you through that whole section and provides this sort of stability there. And then once we get to this final chorus, we want it to just be like super luxurious. And so it kind of opens up into this sort of triplet feel. You'll see it in the flutes, clarinets, and then in the, sh the high strings. It's a it just sort of like makes the whole thing feel just like more flowy. Uh, and I just love how it just makes the last chorus just feel like it opens up into this luxurious space. French horns. <laughs> Couple things to talk about there. I love when we get to this sort of outro moment and we have the violin, or the, all the strings except the basses doing that sort of like It gives it so much energy and then doubled here partially by uh, the clarinet and oboe. And it's just sort of, I don't know, I just love the way that it feels. And this French horn note right here at 116, I just love the way that makes the chord feel. So listen for that French horn note at 116, I'll point it out for you. <laughs> yeah oh man what fun so yeah there's not a lot of like production to break down for this song because it really is just all orchestra um like i said we recorded with real folks at angel studios in london and yeah it was just incredible one random thing you'll notice this is super important is that in pro tools the bar numbers up here match up with the bar numbers in Finale. So when you're recording, you know where you are in Pro Tools and on the sheet music. And that's how we run sessions, is you say, okay, we'll give you click in at 47, playing at 49. And then everybody knows exactly where we are, engineers, players, all of it. These engineers that work in the studios, they're just such pros. They are so fast and it just makes the sessions go so smoothly because they understand music and the technology and so when you're talking in score terminology the engineers get it and that is just such a huge thing when you're burning a lot of money in an expensive recording session so i think that's kind of it for this one yeah i had such a fun time making this song and if you haven't seen the music video for waltzer sweatpants you should definitely go check it out maybe i'll like link to it right here or somewhere i don't know how youtube works uh but it was so much fun to make the music video as well. And yeah, definitely just go check it out. And thank you so much for supporting this music and helping me get to make stuff like this. I don't take it for granted. And thank you so much for being here. See you at the next one. Sorry. There was a fly in here. I don't see it anymore. Oh. <laughs>